Gabe Kapler has stunned the world with his remarks after the recent school shooting that took place in Texas. The former jock has fairly liberal views, which comes as a shock because he's been associated with one of the most conservative leagues in all of America. So what were Kapler's remarks, and why are they being talked about so much? Keep watching for all the details and more. First up, the Giants manager shocks world with his recent decision. With a best friend who's as far right as they come, you'd expect the Giants manager gave Kapler to share at least some of those hyper-conservative views. But not only does the 46-year-old defy all odds, he's in fact outspoken about issues that must result in a few arguments with Kurt Schilling. When the recent Texas school shooting happened, Kapler chose the way of civility to get his point across, instead of memes and insults that rarely drive any discussions and only result in short-lived hype that's incapable of change. Via his blog, the Giants manager released a 700-word essay explaining his decision decision to stop standing up for the national anthem on the field. He explained that the national anthem glorifies a country where school-going children are massacred in broad daylight, and nobody does anything about it. He also wrote, I am not okay with the state of this country. When you're dissatisfied with your country, you let it be known through protest. The home of the brave should encourage this. Having explained his decision, Kapler also declared that he'd continue sitting during pre-game national anthems until things turn around, and until each and every citizen feel safe and secure inside their homes and on the streets. Now for the chaos that has followed. It only took a published essay to cause a huge political debate all over social media. Over this time, poor Kapler's been bombarded with all kinds of filth from his opposers, who want him to keep his politics out of his public life to avoid this kind of backlash. At the same time, there are those who echoed his words and support his right to express himself. Let's start with Major League Baseball or MLB itself. The organization remains pretty quiet over these kinds of issues, and much to the anger of its players as well. Like when Colin Kaepernick took the knee to protest police brutality, this was one organization that seemed pretty arrogant in its detachment from politics. In fact, it took almost a year for a similar movement to start at the MLB as well, when catcher Bruce Maxwell took a knee when Trump had freshly been elected. And even that resulted in much harassment for the 31-year-old. Without the league supporting him, he and his family received a death threats from infuriated conservatives who had made doing daily life things like talking on the phone a matter of life and death. When it comes to the political makeup of the MLB, it's very similar to the NBA. 38% of the league's followers are Democrats, whereas about 32% identify themselves as Republicans, so the quarrels that have broken out make total sense. Plus, the Giants are owned by white billionaires who donate quite generously to the Republicans, so when Kapler went the extra mile to displease them, people don't exactly have nice things to say. Comparisons with outright authoritarian countries have been common when it comes to gun control, but when people get personal and derogatory, it's just not a good look. Kapler's mentions recently have been all that. Abuses hurled at not only him, but those who exist in the same sphere as him, and pointless insults that don't make sense. However, his fellows from the MLB have been somewhat supportive. They were vocal about the need to control gun violence by passing better laws. Fans who identify as Dems also came out in Kapler's support. They're also acting as virtual human shields, shooing the critics away whenever they pester their godfather. Up next, how did Schilling react? If we're being honest, the former pitcher was probably egged on by the fans until he gave in and published a statement about his dear friend's controversial essay. He said that while he disagrees with Kapler's inappropriate statement, he still has a lot of love and respect for him. He also left a piece of advice. But as the manager of the team, it's not about you, ever. It's about the players. Now you make your players answer questions about stuff that has nothing to do with winning games. So what he meant is that the managers should stick to sports and avoid politics if they don't want things to get dirty. Now, if the 55-year-old was still involved with baseball, this would give people the perfect opportunity to troll him. But luckily for him, Schilling chose a life of politics and politics alone. Now, in other MLB news, Tony La Russa's intentional walk of Trey Turner. If you thought the intentional walk was an expired concept, boy were you wrong. Turns out, it's still very much a part of the MLB scene, and thanks to Tony La Russa, has been refreshed in everyone's memories in one of the most controversial moments of this season. Recently, La Russa intentionally walked Dodgers shortstop Trey Turner with a runner on second base, so he could have relief pitcher Bennett Souza instead face Max Muncy. One thing led to another, and the Dodgers ended up winning 11-9. 
Probably the most hilarious part of the walk was not the intentional walk blowing up right in LaRusa's own face, but a fan yelling at the top of their lungs, asking what he was doing when he'd gotten two strikes. That, or maybe it was the puzzled look that Freddie Freeman wore as he stood on second base and said to White Sox second baseman Danny Mendick how he'd never seen anything like that scene before. Mendick turned away in response and smiled, probably just as shocked as his friend. Or maybe it was Muncy himself staring into the White Sox dugout as he went on to round third base. He then uttered some pretty not safe for work language as he crossed home plate. He then went on to drop some serious F-bombs in the post-game interview. All right, the final one. La Russa was even funnier in his own interview, asking with an infuriating grin if anyone would like to ask if his move was a good one or not. Next, Angel Hernandez will sue MLB once again. Hernandez made headlines recently, and he announced that he will be pursuing a legal case against his previous employer. He claims that the league has manipulated its inner umpire workings to make him look like the bad guy. This will be the latest chapter in the legal fiasco that has involved the former umpire in the MLB. Hernandez feels that he's been discriminated against because the MLB has changed its umpiring standard to make him look like a worse umpire than he was and to prevent him from being promoted to crew chief. Hernandez also thinks that the league has a diversity issue and doesn't really hire people from more diverse backgrounds. That does seem like the truth. Before the lawsuit, the league only had one person of color crew chief, Rich Garcia. It seems like MLB is trying as well. Following the suit, that number increased, and the league hired another minority crew chief. In his most recent filing, the 60-year-old clearly stated that he's standing against the MLB for its blatant discrimination. Let's see what becomes of the latest legal action that Hernandez has taken. Many have come out in his support, saying that they've noticed this problem with the league as well. On the other hand, there are those who think that discrimination has nothing to do with how the numbers are looking right now, and that it all comes down to the skills of the employees and what opportunities they're given. And finally, Hector Neris and Dusty Baker have been suspended. The league announced recently that Astros reliever Hector Neris and skipper Dusty Baker have both been suspended for different reasons. Apparently, Neris intentionally threw at Eugenio Suarez toward the head when warnings were already in place. The player was also fined an amount that hasn't been disclosed by the league. The ban will last for a total of four games. And on account of Neris's actions, Dusty Baker has also been fined and suspended from one future game. This is the standard procedure, and managers aren't given any leverage over their players. Bench coach Joe Espada will be acting as the temporary manager for the team till the ban is over. The exact moment that landed Neris and Baker in so much trouble was him throwing a fastball right beside Julio Rodriguez's head, which nearly hit him. It didn't take long for the umpire to blow his whistle and eject both Neris and his manager. The MLB has supported this decision and has stated that it acts as a lesson for other players as well to be careful with how and where they throw the ball and that they don't channel their anger through their throws. That was it for today's video. We hope you liked it. What are your thoughts on Kapler's recent decision? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel where we post similar videos quite frequently. We'll see you in the next one.